short week at Thursday Night yep. Football. Philadelphia Eagles division rival. And you have the honor, sir. Go first today. Here we go. I'm going with Julian Love today. See, I think when you're going against the Philadelphia Eagles, you understand that there's going to be a lot of balls in the air. Carson Wentz likes to throw the ball, but one stat that sticks out to me with Carson Wentz is that he has more interceptions than touchdowns. Yeah. Nine picks versus eight touchdowns. So I'm looking for Julian Love to kind of be that smart guy in the secondary, to be opportunistic, pick his spots. Because if you look at the Ravens game from Philadelphia, there were some opportunistic 50-50 balls yeah. in the air that if they go the other way, that game is a different story. So I think Julian Love can be that guy to kind of get out there and make his presence felt and get an opportunistic turnover that can maybe change the complexion of the game. I think that's a good call because if you look at the way the Philadelphia Eagles played up against that Baltimore Ravens team, very heavy running the football, trying to keep Lamar Jackson off of the field. For me in this game, I've got to go to the D-line, and i got to go to Marcus Golden. Obviously, X-Man's out, Lorenzo Carter's out, and we know that he signed this year to a one-year prove-it deal. Marcus Golden, this is your opportunity up against the backup offensive line for the Philadelphia Eagles that gave up six sacks last week. He's got to be stout up against the run and the way that they run their zone scheme on the inside up against these tackles, but he has to have an impact-making play in this football game for the defense. Yeah, I love Marcus Golden. He's a guy that's sneaky fast but strong and can get to the point of attack and get to the quarterback and really make things happen in the backfield before plays even get started. So I'm looking for him to have a big game as well. And the player for the Philadelphia Eagles that we have to keep below the numbers is Carson Wentz. Yeah, Carson Wentz is really off to a, a, a good game last week against the Ravens and really played well, bringing that team back. 22 unanswered points to get them back in the mix. I know yeah. he didn't come out with the win, but he looked impressive down the stretch and his receivers made plays for him. So in the secondary, if we can get some physical hands on these receivers and not let them just go down the field unimpeded, we'll make it tough on Carson and went to give him time to be back there holding the football so Marcus Golden and those guys can get to him. Carl, it's been a really mixed year for Carson Wentz, the quarterback of the Philadelphia Eagles. I mean, there were reports where people in Philadelphia were saying, is it time to bench him for Jalen Hurts? They're having these rough first halves, but he's still a very dangerous quarterback. Well, they're a very dangerous team, and he understands how to run that system. But, you know, the interesting thing about the quarterbacks with talent in this league, when they start to struggle – there's normally a common denominator, and it's the offensive line. They lost a lot of linemen in their first game of the season, and they're still trying to find their group. It's no different than what you see around the league, including with the Giants. When you have a new line, it takes a while. So the quarterback will have his challenges. Carl, we're going to take a look at Carson Wentz, a quarterback that is able to use his legs like we saw with Daniel Jones in Stats Plus. And the one thing that he does well is he extends plays, whether when you say using his legs, but he gets his eyes down the field as he extends plays, or he'll buy time and an opportunity for, to run for a first down. But here's the one thing he has a really good pocket presence, Bob. So when you're rushing the passer, you need to be here and just box him in as your guys come here. If you get even, let's just say you're even with the quarterback, that gives him an escape route out. So I'll run this, and you'll see just where the defenders are. I'll freeze it. These guys are inside. Quarterback can go out here. He can go out there, and he does. Spins out. Now, when he spins out, this guy's still stuck inside. So when you – I'll bring this back a little bit. Because, Carl, the, the middle linebacker is the guy that's spying him. So if you stay wide and he tries to go up the middle, that guy's there for Right. Him. So we just run it and I freeze it. This guy is in here. Quarterback is already boxed in there. You've got to be outside and sealing the deal there. And he doesn't. And he, the, the spy has no shot here. And he gets completion. Uh, Wentz is obviously leading a big comeback last week against Baltimore. They did come up short. All right, we got another play of him again using his mobility. Yeah, once again, you've got to box him in and get him to the ground. He's a big, strong kid too, Bob. Now they get him. They can't get him to the ground. Look, see how resourceful he is? He doesn't want to throw the interception. He breaks the tackle, eyes down the field. Now, he's got to be sacked there. If, he did, if he's not, he pulls it down. Now, look what he does. He runs for the first down. So, you've got, when you have an opportunity to sack him, you've got to get him down to the ground because he's a big, strong kid. Uh, that's the mobility of Carson Wentz. Uh, once again, the Giants will be playing a game this week against a team 
that can get after the quarterback. What does Philadelphia do well as far as getting after the QB? Pretty simple. Individual effort. If you go across the board, here's a name you haven't heard of. Here's a name you've heard of. Here's a name you've heard of. But what they do is all individually, Bob, they have the ability to beat the man blocking them. Nothing fancy, just getting after it. Look at the ends. Around the corner, fumble. Just basic individual effort. Not a lot of twists. Now, they can give you some games, but these guys are individually just good pass rushers. So you've got to win your one-on-one -on -one battles with this group. And just individually, you just see them just pushing to the quarterback, getting him down. you got to build a wall. Now, what they will do every once in a while, once they get you going individually, they'll give you a little bit of a pass rush stunt. So let's just take a look at the twist here. And what's important, and we talk about this all the time with the Giants offensive line, communication. They've got enough guys to block them. It's only two on each side, and they've got five to block them, Bob. Let's see what happens. They'll get a little twist here at the bottom of the screen. I'll freeze it. Here's a twist. Bring it back just a little bit. Is now, it, you got a center who can help out, right? Yeah, because so there's three guys to block two here. Right. But the center and the guard don't pass off. And what you get is two guys on one and a guy here with no one to block. So the center, guard, and tackle, if they just communicate. They have three guys to block two. It's week seven, and the conversation this week, Victor, starts with a matchup against the Philadelphia Eagles, a matchup that's not just a division game, but also was a pretty memorable one for you. <laughs> Manning back to throw. Zips one left. Caught by Cruz. Runs out of a tackle to the 40. Up to midfield. Makes another man miss to the 45. Down the left sideline. There goes Cruz. 20, 15, 10, 5, touchdown Giants, 74 yards. Yeah, it was a great game for me. Obviously, as an undrafted free agent, I just wanted to come into the game, catch everything that came my way, be where I needed to be for Eli Manning to hit me with the football, and obviously wanted to make the best of my opportunity, and I think I did that. About three catches, over 100 yards, a couple touchdowns. Not a bad day for the kid. Would winning in Philadelphia mean more for this Giants team than a normal road victory? Carl, I'll start with you. Absolutely. It means a lot because they haven't won there in a while, and plus they put together a second straight win. I think it means a lot because not just a second straight win, but I think it's a time for them to get some rhythm. I think that with the NFC East being so bad right now, the Giants are primed to put themselves in the position to maybe be in first place. All right. Are Thursday games more taxing mentally or physically? Howard? I think they're more taxing physically, and I think the reason why is because during that time to recover with the body, it's a little hard on you. Uh, you know the teams already. You've kind of played against them a few times. Uh, the Eagles are, again, one of our conference rivals. So I think it's more physical than it is mental. Well, you know what, Howard? I would agree with you, but there's this old saying that says, mind over matter. Meaning when your body is sore, your mind is like, I don't want to do this. So it's the mental aspect of it. Physical, physical, physical. Mind over matter. Is it a big deal playing on a short week, especially against a division opponent? The only, the only issues that coaches really face is how they manage injured players versus hurt players. And if they can get guys enough rest to get them ready to go or a guy who's been hurt and on IR – are they ready to come back or is it too soon? So those are the only management issues. The preparation, they know. They know what it takes in terms of getting players ready in the proper rest. And Philadelphia lost a couple of key players last week. Zach Ertz, their outstanding tight end, and their starting running back, Miles Sanders, both injured in the game and will not play on Thursday night. A guy that's been a bit of a pain in the butt for the New York football Giants for a long time, defensive tackle Fletcher Cox. Yeah, and everything he does is big. Fletcher Cox, he's wide, he's got long arms, he's got a, a great big wingspan, so no doubt he's, uh, he's, he's, he's a hole plugger in the run game. But he is a force in the pass game, John, and you've got to really anchor in when he gets rocking and rolling. You look at his numbers, career against the Giants, almost a full season worth of football. The group that's going to deal with him in this game are the Giants' interior offensive linemen. They haven't missed a snap of football all year. 
Yeah, it's actually great, and it's helped out with a lot of their chemistry. Coming into the season, they needed all these reps to get acclimated so they're not stepping on each other's feet. But no doubt, when they break the huddle, they're going to be looking to see which side of the ball he's on. Now, he typically lines up over the right guard, so it'll be a lot of him versus Kevin Zeitler. But Fletcher Cox, look, this divisional rivalry, he he knows you know, how much this means to both teams and how physical they both can be. But the one thing about Fletcher Cox is that despite how big he is, he can get on your edge. A lot of times big defensive tackles, they can't get on your edge. They can't turn the corner. They can't flip your hips on the pass rush. He can do that. And then the other thing he does so well, John, is he'll put, he pushes that pocket and collapses the pocket. Now, you mentioned him as a pass rusher, but the Giants are trying to establish the run game. They've done a better job the last couple of weeks. He's a force inside against the run as well. Yeah, he really ties everything up. He, he's tough to, to single block, and, and in combination blocks, he doesn't let you get up to the second level. So the Giants certainly come off their second-best rushing performance of the season with 132 yards on the ground. That's going to be integral. It slows down the pass rush. Um, I think the other kicker is a lot of times you, you want to run away from strength, right? So on the back side of the run plays, Fletcher Cox is really tough. So if it's Kevin Zeitler, if it's, if it's the, the right tackle, Cam Fleming, trying to cut him off, that's a big challenge. You've got to make sure, even when you're running away from Fletcher Cox, that you don't let him disrupt the running play by the penetration and cutting across the guard and tackle's face. Now, Sean, from a strategy perspective against Washington, the Giants ran play action on nearly half of their pass plays. They used a lot of mass protection, six- and seven-man blocking schemes to prevent a good Washington front from getting after Daniel Jones. The Eagles have the same type of front. They have waves and waves of pass rushes that will send after you. Cox, Brandon Graham, you name them. Do you expect a similar strategy from the Giants' offense this week? I think, obviously, you want to have play action pass because you mentioned the two factors. It, it slows down the pass rush, and you can go max protection. So you add a little extra guy in there, a little chip help, never hurts. No doubt the Eagles want to get pressure on Daniel Jones. They're going to rush five, and guess what? They've got two really good corners, and, all right, and Darius Slay. And, and on the other side, they've done a really good job of locking things down with Jalen Mills. So those two corners are going to help out that pass rush as well. The Giants have lost six straight to Philadelphia. 20 of the last 24, six straight to Philadelphia in Philadelphia, Carl. Uh, why has the link become such an issue for this football team? Well, I mean, the Eagles are, number one, a well-coached team. They just compete. They match up well with the Giants. But, you know, the rearview mirror is exactly what it is. They have an opportunity to settle whatever score needs to be settled on Thursday. Now, you've been in this league for a few years. How many times have you seen a momentum-changing turning point game like that kind of help boost a team, in the, at least in the near term? You guys are playing now three of your next four games in the NFC East. Well, you know, anytime you play in the, in the conference, it just means a little more. You know, those count as two. Um, you know, but right now, we're just taking it day by day, man. There's still a lot of things that we have to correct on tape. But, uh, you know, a win is a win, and we'll take them, you know, no matter how they come. You've been banged up a little bit this year. In fact, the Giants have used three different starting safety combinations in the first six games of the season. How difficult has it been for you guys to get the, the symmetry and the cohesiveness that you really need to have? Uh, you know, it's been tough, but, you know, it's the next man up. You know, uh, it's the nature of this league. You know, guys have done a terrific job stepping in and, you know, competing and performing at a high level. And I, I think that gives the coaches confidence that they can mix and match personnel now, knowing that, you know, guys have played and showed that they can play in this league at a high level. And, um, you know, we're just going to keep going from there. With the Philadelphia Eagles, it always starts with Carson Wentz. He's been inconsistent throughout his career. When things are going well for him, what is his most dangerous attribute? And when things aren't going well, what is something that you guys can take advantage of? Well, you know, we don't really like to get into, you know, all those things. But, you know, Carson is a hell of a quarterback. You know, he's mobile. He extends plays with his legs, but keeps his eyes downfield to, you know, get the ball in the hands of his playmakers. Um, you know, so, you know, we know the threat that he proposes. You know, we know the guys that he has around him that makes, makes plays for him. You know, they have an excellent running game. And, uh, you know, we're, we're coming in this game just ready, doing whatever we have to do, you know, getting our bodies back, just trying to gain, gain the edge and, uh, you know, going to Thursday night and do what we do. Ertz and Goddard, they're two tight ends. One of the better combinations of tight ends in the league have been banged up. How much do you think that changes the characteristics of what the Eagles want to do offensively? Uh, you know, next man up mentality, you know, we don't know too much yet. Um, you know, I'm, I'm sure the coaches are going to, you know, pay close attention to the injury report. And, uh, you know, I think that'll tell, you know, 
a sense of what they're going to try to do. But, you know, in this league, man, injuries happen. You know, it sucks, but it but it happens. And, uh, you know, every team has to be prepared for the next man up mentality. And we know they have guys who are capable of getting the job done. We're going to approach it as such. Ward has developed into a pretty dangerous slot guy. He's been with them now for two seasons. In fact, his 42 catches over his first 10 games are the most by an undrafted rookie wide receiver coming in and then going into his second year in NFL history. What makes that slot guy so dangerous? And Fulgham also has come out of nowhere. He's on his third NFL team. He's given them some production too. Well, you know, the slot is one of the hardest positions to cover because of all the space. You know, you have the two-way goals, all the isolation routes. Um, you know, it, it's easy to get into the teeth of the defense. And him being a quarterback, I know he has, you know, recollection of coverages and the reading coverages. So being able to do that at the wide receiver spot in the slot definitely gives you an advantage, um, especially in this league. So, you know, he's done a hell of a job. Um, you know, he's got our attention. Um, so, so, so do a lot of the other guys. And, you know, we're definitely looking forward to the challenge.